Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be changing our linear convolutional model into a nonlinear model using the Keras layer, layer concatenate. So in, this, in the previous video, we built this linear model right here using an input, uh, convolutional max pooling, convolutional max pooling, we flattened it, and then uh, did our classification with 10 classes. And, and this is what the model looks like. Now we're gonna build a nonlinear model. Uh, we're gonna begin the same way with a input and then a convolutional to max pooling layer. Then we're gonna create branch one. It's the same as the other convolutional layer, a four by four with a pool size of two by two. After that, we are going to create branch two, which also comes off the previous X, which was that first max pooling layer, uh, with a kernel size of three by three, a pool size of two by two, and then a dense of 16. Just doing this to change this up. Don't know if this is even a, a good architecture, but it's just the concept that we're going over today. Then we are gonna set X equal to the layer concatenate, and then uh, we are going to uh, make a list of every layer we are planning on concatenating. One thing to know here is the first two dimensions of these, uh, both of these layers of the outputs have to be the same. And I will show you that in a minute when we uh, show the model. And then we flatten it and we do our dense layer again for classification. We are going to build this model here, and now we are going to plot it and get the summary. So we have our input layer, convolutional max pooling. Branch one is over here on the right hand side with a convolutional and a max pooling. Branch two has a convolutional, a max pooling, and then dense. They are then concatenated, flattened, and then we get our output. This is good for visualization, but here in the summary, we can can't really see what's going on, but we can understand a little better what the differences are. Right here, we have our two initial uh, layers, our convolutional, actually three, and then our, our max pooling layer. If we look, this layer is called max pooling 2D underscore two, and that is connected to two different layers here. That is connected to this convolutional 2D underscore four and connected to this convolutional 2D underscore three. So this is branch two. Uh, actually, this is branch one here. Uh, we have our convolutional 2D and we end up reducing our size to, uh, let me see, actually this is, this is branch two right here. Uh, after our uh, kernel size of three by three, we've changed our dimension of that input image from 13 to 11. Then we go through a max pooling layer which reduces it to five by five to 32. Then our other branch, it goes from 13 to 10. Um, and that also, if we look at this underscore three here, it does get out of order, so it gets a little confusing, but this 2D underscore three connects to this right here, which is that max pooling. Uh, but this dense belongs to this max pulling up here. So it's a little confusing, but uh, just an explanation of the sizes of these two layers, dense number one, five by five by 16, and max pulling three, which is max pulling three, are both the same size, so they can successfully concatenate. For example, let's say we wanna make branch number two a two by two. That is going to fail because it is trying to concatenate six by six by 16 with a five by five by 32. As we said before, we had five by five and five by five. The reason why we now have a six by six 
is we are no because we are not using padding in our convolutional layer. Uh, if you have a smaller kernel, uh, you actually uh, your image size decreases less. And I do have a video which I can link to that shows how convolutional con convolutional layers and pooling layers reduce the sizes of the images or the data in general that's getting passed through. So this was just a quick review of what the concatenation layer does in Keras. You can concatenate layers, you can concatenate models together, and this allows you to build nonlinear uh, neural networks so you can do more uh, complex uh, more complex classifications. So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments section below. Again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.